Hi, I'm Lippy. And I'm Grumpy. Together we're Lippy and Grumpy Do Podcasting. In this episode, wage tracking, stag weekends, flip-flops and eating the same meal for 10 years. Now, Lippy. Hello. You've just had a bit of a dash home, haven't you? I have, yes. Speedy. Speedy. And you sent me a link to Waze with Mm. your where you were, which was quite good. Uh, Except to refer to you as a Wazza. (laughs) (laughs) I guess it's because I wasn't logged on to Waze. You're just someone that uses Waze. Yeah, I don't think I've ever set a name on there. So, Oh, maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I should set myself a cool name up. Yes, I would. Yes, because people yeah. driving around thinking you're Wazza. Mm. Anyway, you said you had an interesting story on your trip home. I well, it it's semi interesting, and actually is a good duck boy moment for duck boy. I have been craving double stuffed Oreos recently. Don't oh. know why. Haven't had them for ages. Just really wanted some double stuffed Oreos, and. I was working in London today, so I drive to Richmond, then get on the district line and get off of Victoria. Okay. This makes it a lot easier. So Duck Boy comes and meets me because he works in Richmond off the train and walks me to my car because he's on a break then. Um, And as we walk into the car, he pulls out a packet of double stuffed Oreos. Oh. Oh, Such a dream. So then I get in the car and I'm like, no, I won't open them yet. And then there's a bit of traffic trying to get out of the car park. And I was like, I'll just have one. Oh, no. no, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so then I said to myself, right, I can, I'll only, because they're quite hard to get in and out of the packet. So I was like, okay, I'll only eat them when I'm stopped at traffic lights or roundabout in okay. the traffic. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's tried to get out of Richmond at about six o'clock in the evening. It's traffic lights and then lots of roundabouts with traffic lights as well. And honestly, I I ate three quarters of the packet. So presumably Richmond is jammed up with people at roundabouts trying to get a double stuffed Oreo out of a packet. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's a little bit like a drinking game for driving. Yeah. Every time you stop, have a double stuffed Oreo biscuit. I And I did. And I thoroughly enjoyed myself. But then it did make me think, there must be people like walking, because it's obviously the high street as well. Looking in the car, being like, why is she just eating loads of double stuffed Oreos? <laughs> well, uh, worst things go on in cars. Yeah. I, I find opening a packet of anything in a car on a longish journey is is fatal. Mm. And if I'm really good, sometimes there'll be one or two wine gums left in the packet at the end. I know. And I th- the thing is, there's only a third of the packet. A third? Quarter? Maybe? It's hard to tell when they're double stuffed because there isn't as many as there looks like there is. Oh. Because there's extra stuff in. But anyway, so I'm going to finish them tonight, I've decided. Do you know what? Sometimes you just have to make the decision to eat badly. And that's what well, I'm going to do. Well, yes. Plus also you've opened the packet so the calories have escaped. Yes, exactly. They're already in me. Yeah, well, they've escaped into the atmosphere. <laughs> anyway, last week we talked about Teslas. We did. And this rolling stop feature, which I thought I hadn't looked up, but in fact I had actually looked up and forgotten all about it. But I have some some notes here. So the rolling stop feature, which has now been disabled, allowed Tesla cars to travel through all-way stop intersections at up to 5.6 miles an hour before coming to a complete stop if certain criteria are met. These include that there are no relevant moving cars. I'm not sure what a relevant moving car is, presumably in the direction of your car. Or oh, like. I see. And no relevant pedestrians or bicycles near the intersection. That there is sufficient visibility for the vehicle and that roads at the intersection have speed limit of 30 miles an hour or less. So what I'm guessing, because this is all about automated driving, is pretty much what you would do at a at a four-way stop on all-way stop which we don't have many in this country no in fact i only know of one in bookham which is a sort of more of a square about than a roundabout a square about a square well it's square it's not round and uh so everybody has to stop and then presumably somebody has to go at some point yeah um, i don't know how that works but maybe so the tesla the just goes no well the tesla well no i think what happens is it stops 
or it can see there's nothing coming, so will then slow down to 5.6 miles an hour. Why 5.6? I've no idea. And Maybe then, that's the speed in which go, you don't get ticketed. I, I don't, well, it's either stop or it's not, isn't it? Mm. Anyhow, it has been removed. Now, we had a bit of a lippy and grumpy trip out on Saturday, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yes, it only occurred to me uh, when I was writing up the notes for this that yeah. so we had a little jaunt into Guildford on Saturday morning. And, yes. Uh, I'd had a bit of a issue with paying some money into Barclays Bank, and I'll make no secret of their customer service is diabolical. No. And I ended up having to go into the branch to do it, mm. um, all because of bugs in their system and the fact that you can't speak to anybody. And yeah. So I really cannot unrecommend Barclays <laughs> enough in that respect. Anyway, then we went to Cafe Nero. So yes, that's the right we one? Did. Yeah, Cafe Nero, yeah. which was very nice. I think it's the first time I've been there. I love and a cafe. I was, yeah, I was really impressed with that. Uh, yes. More so because the drinks were free because you had some tokens. Mm, yes, I had another free coffee today. Now the reason that we had the trip is you were over us while while Duck Boy had his first stag weekend. Yes. Now I did see some pictures of some very garishly dressed uh, young men. Yeah. And presumably he made it back okay. He did. And to be honest, it sounded quite tame, other than a lot of drinking. Like a lot of drinking. Yeah, it sounded quite... Nothing that weird happened. Nobody did anything too stupid. Yeah, it didn't seem too bad. I uh, picked Duck Boy along with three others up from the airport. And the only thing was that the next day I got in my car and it literally smelt like stale men. Yes, it was couldn't disgusting. Have been pleasant. No, <laughs> couldn't have been pleasant. No, there isn't a um, what are those trees? Magic trees strong enough for that sort of yeah. odor, unfortunately. Yeah, no. So having me crammed in a um, cheap flight home, and um, and I'm I'm pretty sure no one had showered that morning. I'm not going to lie, almost certainly not. Have they gone straight to the beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've laid in the sun, sweated a bit, stuck sweated on the, the alcohol out. Yeah, although from what you were saying, it sounds like they went um, a bit mad on the first night and then realised they were too old to carry on. Yeah, so the first night they were quite chilled because they are Tottenham fans, most of them. And there was a Tottenham Arsenal game on that Tottenham won. Woo! Um, So they watched that, had a few beers, didn't stay out too late. The Friday night they did a a bad shirt night. It's not called a bad shirt night, it's called another (laughs) word, but I'm not going to say the other word. Oh. Um, to which some of the shirts were great. One of them was covered in mushrooms because he was a fun guy. Oh, that's my kind of shirt. <laughs> Loved and, it. Yeah. Was that the photo you showed me? Yes. Oh, yes. They were some cracking shirts there. In fact, I would have worn any of those outfits. Mm-hmm. And I had the pleasure of picking Duck Boy's shirt because he sent me one and I was like, no, that's that's not enough. Like, that's Too quite tame. a cool shirt. You would wear that out. Like it wasn't, it was like a bad shirt that's like in fashion. So I was like, no, 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 no. Like, let me find you one. I'll find you one. So I found him a yellow. I don't know how to describe this yellow. other Like a lemon yellow, like a lemon skin yellow. Okay. But silk. Yeah. And then the two front body panels were covered top to bottom in square, like mirror shiny things. <laughs> that- so that was his shirt. That is awesome. Yes. It's like wearing the front of the, is it the Bellagio in Las Vegas, where they hang all those little mirrors on the front of the... The Bellagio. Bellagio, that's it. Yeah. On the front of the hotel. Mm. And they just they just move slightly in the wind and twinkle. It's quite uh, quite something. Oh, well, I'm glad yes. he's back safe and sound. And I think mm. there's another one lined up to which us old folks have been invited to. Yes, he so, will be. I yes. think, well, I think he's planning on lining that up with my Hindu, but actually, I'd quite like him to see her home and be like, oh, I wonder what she's doing. Because that's what I did all weekend. Yeah, you see, men are a little bit different. Yeah. They, they view a weekend on their own in the house completely differently. Yeah, I was, um, I was, le- I wasn't obviously worried about what they were doing. I was more worried that he would drink too much alcohol, pass out somewhere, and and not wake up the next day. Well, that that does seem a little unlikely, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I've not been on a duck boy bender before, so 
No, he uh, he doesn't have the best, uh, what's the word? Self-control? Yes. <laughs> a bit like you with the double stuffed Oreos. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so I think we'll draw a line. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pot, kettle, black and all of that. <laughs> Now, Wife of Grumpy showed me a news article um, that she knows I would have been interested in about uh, a bloke who's never piloted a plane before landing a plane. And she she showed me the picture. Sorry, hang on, sorry. Wife of Grumpy was shown this by Lippy, oh, okay. who has now claimed it as her own well, she story find. Me. Well, Well, maybe. The, the point is, the photo that I saw, and I saw subsequently, was a picture on a, uh, on a you know, big runway. And it was a big plane. I'm going to say jumbo, but it wasn't a jumbo because they're not flying anymore. And um, I said, so was it, was it a big plane? She said a jumbo. And then that went on to a conversation about jumbo's not flying anymore. But um, she said, oh, no, 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 it was a little um, a little plane, Cessna. I went, oh, okay. So I looked at it, didn't think any more about it. Found the article because I thought it was interesting to talk about. But there's no picture of the plane. This is on CNN. And then on my uh, socials feed, the story popped up again. And there's the photo. So it's got man uh, lands plane when pilot passes out, or worse than that effect. Mm. And there's a massive great. Um, Dreamliner or whatever it is on the runway but that's not the plane it's the uh, little Cessna you can hardly see in the foreground so, so the clickbait brilliant brilliant bit of clickbait but ha- you know hats off to this guy he's uh, he managed <laughs> to land a plane when the pilot passed out very impressive uh, I'm not sure he was a complete novice well they they said he hadn't flown a plane before and he was guided down by the sky control people but then they couldn't find him i don't know if they found him no i think they just disappeared no there's a picture here on cnn sorry i mis misread that so robert morgan was the air traffic controller who talked the guy down and it says here morgan had never flown this model cessna so morgan's not the person that landed the plane that was darren harrison Got Uh... got my names confused there so Darren had never flown before. and uh, He's the one that actually landed the plane. He brought it down. Down to the skill of the air traffic controller. That, mm. that really is quite something. Yeah. Uh, um, it, it's sort of a little bit of a nightmare of mine that um, yes. the pilot passes out. And I think that's from the Airplane series of films in the 70s. <laughs> uh, where the entire flight the absolute crew... absolute carnage. Ate the fish. Yeah. That ate, is, that's ate it. the fish. And uh, yeah. all, all died from food poisoning. Now... One of my pet peeves, and there is quite just a long one. list of this, yeah. just, one of the, just one of them, but a double story. Flip-flops. Oh, God. You and a flip-flop. I, I cannot think of any situation where a flip-flop is appropriate footwear, with the possible exception of going into a public shower. Okay. Th- there's, there's none to me. And That's... camping, definitely not, because... They make a noise all the time. So if you're (laughs) going to the toilet in the middle of the night, you've got to walk all the way through the field going Mm. flip-flop, 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 flip, which is annoying. True, true. I was horrified. There's no other way to put it. Absolutely horrified to find out that there is a 5K run where you run in flip-flops. You can't run in flip-flops? Well, apparently you can. There's a Sussex Trail event, and it's on the 15th of June. On Worthing Promenade, uh, you even get a pair of flip flops included. But that to me just sounds like a health and safety nightmare. Yeah, you have a lot nightmare. of people stacking it. You would. I mean, I suppose the only grace is that because they're new flip flops, they won't perhaps be quite as um, falling apart as maybe some people would turn up in flip flops in. Possibly, but you do they those little the bits in the middle, the bit that goes between your toes. It does pop out quite a lot. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Yes, I don't see that as a good idea. Anyway, so part two of this flip-flop story is that um, Snowden Mountain Rescue uh, have asked people to wear appropriate gear because people have been climbing Snowden in flip-flops. No. To be honest, when when I did a three-peat for MS Charity, um there was someone that was coming down Ben Nevis in flip-flops. Yeah, I mean, that is just crazy. 
They didn't make all, it to the top. All sorts of crazy. So silly. I do think people forget that Snowdon is a mountain. Like, it's not just a hill. Like, it's it is not, a mountain. No. No, you're absolutely right. And the problem is, if you walk up there on a nice sunny day, it is like a stroll in the park. It yes. Is, yeah, I've done it in good weather, and it's fantastic. And I've done it, and not got to the top, in poor weather, because mm. it's so windy. And flip-flops are not appropriate at any time, because the weather can change in an instant. So it's, quickly. So quick and change. actually, from bottom to top as well, because of obviously the height of it, it was absolutely freezing, clouded over at the top, very hard to see. But then, honestly, that was literally like the last five minutes. We just yeah. dropped down below the cloud and it was sunny. It was fine. I do agree with that. Interestingly, though, this is in the Daily Post for North Wales. If you scroll down to the bottom of the article, there's another article about two fairly experienced climbers mm. who climbed Snowdon without any shoes on whatsoever. That's different. To raise money for uh, charity. That's I actually view that as very... Because your feet have a lot of natural balance and grip. Yes. The issue is the flip-flop. It's not the bareness of your foot. It's the actual flip-flop section is not... Not got enough grip. It That's doesn't true. bend yeah. well enough. It doesn't, it adds to the like unprotectedness because you can trip a lot easier. But actually barefoot is similar grip to wearing a trainer. So it's just yes. if you can actually yeah. walk on those kinds of that, materials without That's the thing is, feet. yes, it's not walking on nice soft grass or no. <laughs> It's very <laughs> shingly. Yes. So I don't know how much they raised, but uh, that's quite an achievement. I saw an interesting article about a man that's never worn shoes and he can walk on all kinds of surfaces without his feet, without even flinching. So I walk over a pine cone just to prove it. Good heavens. And it was fine. Well, he looked fine, whether or not he hobbled off after he got off the camera. But Yeah, but I suppose before the invention of shoes, we didn't wear them at all. And your skin, you do get quite tough skin on your feet. You can do, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess it's softened by socks and shoes. Mm. Now, there's a picture in on the BBC News website that I thought was the street that we covered a couple of weeks ago in Bristol, the steepest one. Uh, but it's not the same. It's in Darlington, and it does look pretty steep. And the council have resurfaced it. Unfortunately, somebody decided to leave their car parked on the side of the road, and they've mm-hmm. actually tarmacked round it. So there's a, there's a it's just it's bizarre and uh, apparently the the motorists were warned but maybe he didn't normally park there and didn't get the message who knows Mad. yeah absolutely bonkers um, so they've got to come back and fill that bit in which is uh, a bit annoying yeah bit a bit annoying and that tends to be what causes problems with the surface of the road where, yeah you know, where it has the different like cutouts. Where they've yeah, yeah. Well, the people done it at different roads, times. Yes, dig it's up not the blended. Definitely not. Well, it's not one piece, is it? It's mm. uh, it's a fix, which won't be uh, won't be very good. But um, yes, so I don't know what happened there, but um, obviously he uh, he would have been quite embarrassed. Mm. Darlington Borough Council said, as the vehicle in question has been left in an area without parking restrictions, we're not able to take action. I mean, part of me feels like the correct thing to do would have been to put out those yellow no parking cones like a couple of days before they were due to start. So well, that they, there was they no claim park. there were signs up saying resurfacing works, no parking from 9th to 10th of May. It's not the same as those little cones, though, that are just in the way. I suppose not. I don't know. But when did you do that? Actually, if there were signs up though saying no parking, surely they could still they could find them then because there's a sign from the council well, saying no I, parking. Mm, I don't know. I don't know how. Well, obviously that's not enforceable. No. Because otherwise they would have towed it away mm. and then been able to do a proper job. But, uh, we had an annoying person blocking our driveway the other day. Oh, that is annoying. Because our driveway is a bit odd, so we've got quite a long, or like a wide driveway, uh, like and next door would have a wide driveway but they've got a weird front garden thing that's not a garden it's just like some gravel but they don't park on it and the we share a dropped curb so our dropped curb only really comes like a quarter of way the way across our driveway 
and then the rest of it's a high curb. So someone's parked right over our driveway, but because it's not a dropped curb, they can park there. And it took me four goes to get out the drive. Yeah, it's a difficult one, that. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of rules and regulations about mm. parking. But if you're stuck in your driveway, then I think you can call the police. But yeah, I wasn't that stuck. I, I got out do, eventually. Yeah. yeah. So we're thinking about applying to get our curb dropped. That sounds like a very good idea. Because mm. we have a similar problem with, with ours, because the drop curb's quite narrow. Yes. And the road's quite narrow as well. So in able to, to be able to get out, you've got to take quite a curve. But some people park right up to the end of the drop curb or a little yeah. bit beyond it, which makes it very difficult. Mm. And uh, I looked at the council regulations and you can apply, you have to apply for planning permission to have it done, mm. which obviously costs money. And they won't consider it if it reduces the amount of parking. So that by extending the drop curb, it would reduce the size of that space, which is only just ah. big enough for a car down a bit. So I can't imagine they would say yes. What to mine? Oh, no, I don't know about yours, but, uh, but to Because it's literally in front of our driveway. Yeah. Well, that's a they might say yes. Different, I guess. Worth a try. So if you left your wallet or purse in a taxi mm. with some money in it, how long do you reckon it would take to get it back? When would you give up thinking you're going to get it back? That's that's really oh, hard. when would I? Pretty quickly, to be fair. If I I would ring the taxi company, and if they had no idea what I was talking about, I, I would. To be fair, I would think it was lost instantly. Be like, I'm yeah, not getting that back. Pretty much. Well, this gentleman, seven years after he lost his wallet, Stop. he got it back. Unfortunately, no. some of the notes that it was so old, they're out of circulation. <laughs> That's so funny. Seven years. <laughs> yep, had £134 in it. That must have been really well hidden in the taxi for them not to find it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how they, they missed it, to be weird. honest. But, uh, yeah, very That's weird funny. indeed. Quite quite interesting. Yeah. I assume you can take the pounds back to the bank and they'll swap them. Yeah, I think the bank always changes old stuff. Yes. So if you've lost your wallet, don't give up hope. No. You might have to wait seven years, but... You might have to, yeah. Now, I came across an interesting article about how you can blur your house on Google Street View. No, because that not that the point of Google Street View, is to be able to see what's on the street? So if you can blur your house, then... Well, def- people are saying that it's a, it's a little bit of a, um, a villain's encyclopedia, if you like, because you can zoom up and down roads and see what's on driveways and as you can with um the satellite one as well but uh but also there's been some instances with people uh, climbing out of windows and various nefarious activities that have gone on that people want to uh, to block <laughs> and i think there's a story jack whitehall tells of him having done something a bit naughty uh, in terms of smoking and oh. came guy came out of the building and was feeling quite unwell. And he stood there with his hands around his stomach just as the, the Google, Google, Google streetcar. Well, not the calendar, the streetcar comes Did I across. say calendar? You did, the Google calendar. <laughs> the car. Yeah, the Google street uh, streetcar comes past and obviously recorded for, not posterity, because they do refresh the images every now yeah. and then. And, uh, yes, I was caught once in one of the photos in the car with a friend of mine. You are proud of, yeah. It's disappeared now. It's it yeah. quite a few years ago, but they do they do change every now and then. But there, there are valid reasons why you might want to blow your house, and uh, yeah. it is possible within within Google. And there's a list here of of how to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I did actually stalk some people I work with today and where they live. <laughs> oh, really? See, that's using Google Street View. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a little bit worrying. I had to send them something, so I was like, I want to know where it's going. Well, that's very true. You don't need to have a picture of the house, but... Uh... Yeah, I do. I then looked on Rightmove to see how... I was. I didn't have a lot on today. So I then looked on Rightmove to see how much their houses were worth and what the insides looked like. Now, we're back to Wales for the next story. And this happens every now and then. It comes, this same story comes up where there's been a translation that's needed for Wales. So obviously, street signs and road markings are in two languages, English and Welsh. Mm. And it seems to be that quite often they'll send off the translation to be translated from England to English to Welsh, and then it'll come back and they'll 
print it on the sign, sometimes including the footer of the email and all sorts of other information, <laughs> because it's in Welsh. And if that's not your language, it's not your language. Yeah, you're not sure. Yeah, you're definitely not sure. So this is the entrance to your favourite shop in Landudno, Audi. Oh yes. Oh yes. I was like, I don't I have a favourite shop in Wales. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh so it's a no entry on, on the road. Mm. And the Welsh translation is uh, I'm gonna mess this up, but let's have a go. Dim Kofnod. And Dim Kofnod means no record oh. rather than no entry. So if you think about it, if you're thinking about a diary, for example, if you haven't put mm. anything in for that day, that could be a no record. Yes. But it's not, it's no entry. So uh, apparently it's going to be corrected. Ah. But easy mistake to make. And you, know, you look at some of the translators you get for foreign languages, sometimes you end up saying something not quite right. And I guess it's the same from other languages back to English, because there's some really absurd bits of English. There definitely is. Now, it's obviously a Wales week this week. Cause there's it another is. story from Wales. Mm. It's a Welsh farmer who's eaten the exact same meal for 10 years and has only left Wales once. <laughs> what? I want to know why he left Wales, does it say? Oh, that's a good question. Like, if he's only uh, left once, why did he leave? Oh, I once visited a farm in England. Okay. So there's a documentary called Heart Valley, which follows a day in the life of Wilf Davis, who's a sheep mm. farmer. And he said he's had the same supper for 10 years, and it consists of two pieces of fish, one big onion, an egg, baked beans, and a few biscuits at the end. And he's had that even on Christmas Day. And for lunch, you'll have a pear, an orange, and four sandwiches with paste. Doesn't say what sort of paste. And sometimes, if it's cold, he'll have soup. Mm. So he does mix it up a little bit. A little bit. Never indulged in a takeaway. And when he goes to the supermarket, he knows exactly what to buy, which is actually quite good planning. I yeah, that is quite good planning. Uh, he's never had Chinese, Indian, French food uh, because he's found the food he loves. And I think that's brilliant. He is a well, man that is comfortable with himself. The first thought that springs to mind is that he has a very undeveloped palate because I couldn't, I really like food. Like I love food. So I couldn't imagine only eating the same thing for the rest of my life. No. Because I I like all sorts. Unless I could eat all the food all the time. So just be constantly eating. I could probably eat baked beans on toast every night. Yeah, I could as a snack after I've had a dinner. No, as, as dinner. I don't think I'd be very popular. Due no, to the you trump it enough as beans. it is. Yes, exactly. Yes, and more so now being on plant-based diet. Yeah. No, I couldn't. So we're going out for dinner and the cinema on Friday night and I already know what I'm going to eat because we're going to Cozy Club and the last time I went to Cozy Club I had this burger. I can't remember what it was called. A dirty burger. Oh, yes. And it was a burger and then a fried macaroni cheese like pate, patty thing and then bacon and more cheese and oh my God, it was the best thing I've ever eaten. So I'm having that. Wow. I do like the Cozy Club. Uh, when mm. I was going up to Cheltenham quite a bit, I'd tend to eat in there. It's yes. Very, very nice food. But I do something similar. If we know we're going somewhere, I will pre-look at the menu. Always. Because I like and then food. Order, well, yeah, but then order something on the specials. Because if, if there's something on the specials I like the look of, I tend to go for that because it's Because mm. it's special. Trying. Because it's special like me. Yeah. I um I do get food envy quite a lot as well. That is definitely a thing I have. But I'm quite lucky because Duck Boy lets me try his meals. Yeah, see, I don't. I think that's... Yeah, but I just... I, re I horribly regret some things I order sometimes and then I'm like, oh my God, why didn't I get something else? Why didn't I just get the same as the other person so I didn't get the food envy? Yes, I, I've made some disastrous meal choices in France and there was a time before you were born when Wife of Grumpy and I were looking for somewhere to eat on a Sunday afternoon. And Sundays typically in France, certainly back then, they just shut down. There was virtually mm. nowhere open. So we finally found somewhere, sat down, looked at the menu, which was in French, because we were in the middle of nowhere. And I just sort of went, oh, I'll have that, not really knowing what it was. And off he went. And I thought, well, maybe I ought to look that up. So I looked it up, and it was tripe, basically, I'd ordered. So mm. not, yeah. And mm. I sort of struggled for a bit of it. I went, 
I can't eat this. Even if I didn't know what it was, I would. It doesn't taste nice. Yeah, it doesn't taste nice. It's chewy and probably very good for you, but uh, Mm. but not very tasty. Yeah. Anyway, do you have a top tip for us this week? And are you going to mock the duck boy? No, I'm not actually. And I haven't come up with this top tip either. I was doing some research. I'm in charge of the company newsletter. And normally I get quite a lot of stuff sent through to me. So I just use that. But this month I haven't had, I've had like one thing. So I've had to come up with some other stuff. So I was doing some research on some things and I was like looking up funny comments and like signs and pictures and stuff just to do like a little funny page. Um, and I came across a top tip from a museum. Yeah. And you know, in some museums, there's a lot, there's like areas where you can participate and touch things and look at things and make things happen. It's more interactive. That's the word I'm looking for. There's an interactive section of quite a lot of museums. So this was a picture taken at that and it's a little yellow circle with holes in it. And the question at the top is what's inside? And then at the bottom, so obviously you put your hand in to feel what it is and try and work out what it is. Underneath that, it said, outside of the museum, never put your hand in a hole that you can't see into. (laughs) That's very good advice. That is very good advice. (laughs) (laughs) For all sorts of reasons. But then in my head, I'm like, who thought they needed to add that to the bottom of the holes? Had they had some mum or parents complain that their kid had been there, done that, and then tried to put their hands in other holes? Uh, it's it's a possibility. It's but a distinct honestly. Poss- possibility. As somebody pointed out, and actually I can verify this from servicing your car on Saturday, go back 30 years and the owner's manual told you what the spark plug gap was and what the um, mm. tap it gap was. These days it tells you not to drink battery acid. What? Yeah, I mean that's that's where we've got as a society from, from a situation. If you're where not you could, told not to do it, someone's going to do it. Well, I suppose so, but where do you draw the line with that one? Mm. <laughs> Nowhere really. It depends who you're dealing with. So yeah, that's that would be my top tip. Don't put your hand in any holes you can't see into. Very good. Well, my fun fact has come via the screaming tomato, who uh, sends me some information about hunger tonga. Uh, which was uh, an eruption and a tsunami. And apparently it's the, the eruption was the largest explosion recorded in the atmosphere by modern instrumentation and far larger than any 20th century volcanic event or nuclear bomb test. Mm -hmm. And only the Krakatoa eruption in 1883 rivaled the atmospheric disturbance. So he claims not to have heard it whilst it was relatively close to him near um, New Zealand oh. but he's on, obviously not in New Zealand no. so we had a brief discussion about it and I pointed out I find it hard to believe there's something noisier than Lippy <laughs> I would agree that's it for this podcast thank you so much for listening you can help spread Lippy and Grumpy's view on life by leaving a review on your favourite podcast platform. If you're not sure how to leave a review, or if you download from Spotify, there's some help at lippyandgrumpy.uk slash review. And if you would like to get in touch, email podcast at lippyandgrumpy.uk. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. Goodbye. goodbye.